James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. Today on Truths That Transform, we recall the Supreme Court's ruling in favor of abortion 47 years ago, one still damaging our country today. They said that unborn children are not persons and are not deserving of the protection of our Constitution and our law. This Sanctity of Life Sunday, a victim of abortion speaks out. I found out that meeting that my birth mother had actually had an abortion when she was pregnant with me. Join us for Sanctity of Life Sunday on today's Truths That Transform. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. Today is Sanctity of Human Life Sunday, when we solemnly remember the Supreme Court case that legalized the murder of innocent persons in the womb 47 years ago this week. On today's program, you will hear powerful words from Dr. D. James Kennedy on the value of human life and the toll paid by nations that forget that. And we will give you the opportunity to make your voice heard on this and many other key issues for the 2020 election year. As we begin, there is perhaps nothing that can better demonstrate to us the humanity of the baby in the womb than those who were slated to be aborted and yet survived and are with us today. Our own Dr. Jerry Newcomb has more. I am married, I have children, um, I live in Austin, Texas, and I had an incredible life growing up. And so people, you know, think, gosh, that must have changed so much for you that sh must have just destroyed you to find that out but I can say that um, because I was grounded in my faith and who I was and what my family um, the principles that my family raised me on I knew who I was in that moment as my birth mother shared that with me and so that didn't change. Claire Caldwell of Texas knew she was adopted so about 10 years ago she was so happy to finally get to meet and to thank in person the mother who gave birth to her and gave her up for adoption. But little did she know the backstory about her mother. My parents were separated. My dad, alcoholic, but always felt the love from him even though he might be a drunk. <laughs> love. And my mom, very abusive. She, uh, I don't even remember her ever hugging me, telling me she loved me, giving me any kind of compassion. So therefore I seeked outside affection from Claire's dad mainly. So I find myself with this young, good looking jock cowboy. So I remember when I first thought I was pregnant at 13, the most frightening day of my life to tell my mother. Um, so I got up the courage and I told her it didn't go well. You know, here come the beatings, the uh, telling me how worthless I was, how horrible I was, I was gonna ruin the Fagan name. So she said, well, you're not gonna have it. And I tried to fight that. I had no family support. I mean, what could I do at 13, you know? So she takes me to the abortion clinic. I've never been so scared. All you heard was suction, and then after that is clean her up, she's done. I remember going to that bathroom and just crying, just throw up. You know, I'll never remember, I'll never forget turning my head and seeing my baby and, you know, just there in that canister. Meanwhile, fast forward 21 years later, Claire Colwell knew nothing of this tragic background. All she knew was that for the first time in her life, she was finally going to get to meet her birth mother. 
I was thrilled to meet my birth mother. Um, we met the first time in Dallas um, in 2009, March of 2009, and um, we had this incredible reunion. On our second meeting, that was um, the moment that changed my life forever. I found out that meeting that my birth mother had actually had an abortion when she was pregnant with me. Um, they had told her that her life would go back to normal and that they would fix her problem, but her life didn't go back to normal. Claire's mother had known something was wrong, as if she were still pregnant after all, despite the abortion she had just had. So she drives me, she takes me back to the abortion clinic and they say I was too far along at that time. And they told her that day that her abortion had been successful on one baby, but that, oops, they didn't know there were two, and so I had survived my birth mother's abortion. Claire's grandmother didn't take well this news that there were twins, and only one had been aborted. So she drives me to Kansas, to another abortion clinic. She lost it. She screamed at the doctors, you got to be kidding me, you know, this little whore, um, she can't have this baby, we can't have this baby, you know, what are you going to do with it? Um, I remember her being so angry, and I remember even the doctor trying to calm her down. That's your only option is to have this baby. Because they had ripped the amniotic sac that I was in, it was too dangerous for them to perform a second abortion. So we went back out to the um, to the waiting area, and the receptionist is the one that told us about Deaconess Hospital and told my mom that, you know, well, I could give the baby up for adoption, you know, I can go to this home. So we drove straight from Kansas to Oklahoma City, and that's where she dropped me off. I never went back home uh, from my trip to Kansas until after Claire was born. And so I was delivered at 30 weeks, and I had uh, I weighed three pounds two ounces. I was 10 weeks premature. Um, I had a dislocated hip and club feet. Uh, my visible signs are my everyday reminders of being a twin. Um, but miraculously, the abortion instruments never touched my body. Claire, the little baby who survived an abortion, was given over to her adoptive mother, Barbara. I felt so relieved knowing that, you know, Barbara, she's getting her baby. She was so excited, you know, to get this baby girl. And the look on their face, you know, when they seen her, um, that gave me joy. That gave me a little bit of closure to know that she was safe and that they loved her. When I met my birth mother, I had a choice to make. I could either be angry and upset, or I could choose to forgive my birth mother and see how God um, would bring something good out of something that was meant for harm or for evil for me. And that's exactly what he's done, and it's been incredible. Yeah, I've given her the best life that she could have ever had. And so, no, I don't have any regret in that. Adoption's beautiful. When mother and daughter finally got to meet each other, it was the moment of a lifetime. You know, I opened the door and I just, I looked at myself in the mirror and... I think I've lived a, a normal life even in the moment that I found out I survived my birth mother's abortion. I don't even know if we said hi until we embraced. And it was just such the best hug ever. <laughs> and we just sat down and we ate and we looked at pictures and we laughed and cried and um, ate more and cried more and it was like a huge family re reunion. But it was like I knew these people my entire life. I, they are my people. All the weight and all the hurt and anger, it was just, it was gone. It was all worth it, you know? Here's my baby girl. That's why I share my story, because I want to put a face and a name and a story with the unborn child, and I saw how abortion hurt 
my birth mother and has hurt and wronged so many women that regret their abortion. And so um, I believe that abortion takes the life of a human being just like me and just like you. You don't want that baby, give that baby a life. Give that baby a family that's longing to have a baby. And if they abort, they never get that chance. The baby never gets a chance. One other thing is if you are thinking about abortion, reach out to somebody. You know, reach out to wherever in your community, the voice of choice. Don't give up, girls, do not give up. I am so glad that I am alive. I'm so grateful, you know, I, I believe that, that God um, spared my life so that I could share a story like this. God has blessed America. The new book, Miracles in American History, Volume 2, Amazing Faith That Shaped the Nation, shows how God's hand has been on America from the start. The book, Miracles in American History, Volume 2, is the faith that shaped the nation. It begins with the first great awakening and how it united the colonies. You'll discover inspiring stories from William Penn to the Apollo space missions. Buzz Aldrin, uh, before he stepped out of the module, uh, request radio silence, and he had communion. So the first food consumed on the moon was communion. Contact us today to receive your copy of Miracles in American History, Volume 2, Amazing Faith That Shaped the Nation. It's a fascinating book, and I think it'll inspire people at a time when our country is rediscovering the faith that made us great. It's impossible to see someone like Claire Culwell and not realize that abortion is an attack on human beings. But there is some good news in this battle. Our efforts have not been in vain. The Centers for Disease Control released a new report on abortion last month showing that the abortion rate has decreased in the past 10 years by 24%. But that also means over 600,000 persons, each one created in the image of God, are still being killed each year. We want to give you an opportunity to make your voice heard on the importance of this and many other great moral issues of our day. Contact us right away to receive the 2020 Spiritual State of the Nation Survey. Fill it out and return it to us right away. And let us know the issues you think are most important this year. And we will share the results with key leaders in the media and in government. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll free, 877-962-7677 or you can go online to djkm.org. Nobody spoke more forcefully or persuasively on the sanctity of life than Dr. D. James Kennedy. Here he is with a portion of his powerful message, Life, an Inalienable Right. It was in 1973 that the Supreme Court passed the famous or infamous Roe v. Wade decision, our Constitution declares, or rather our Declaration of Independence, that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights. And among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And as Dr. Francis Schaeffer said in one of his last messages which was given right here in this pulpit that the right of life is more fundamental and basic than the right even of liberty or the pursuit of happiness or any other right for that matter. It is good to remember the context in which that decision was made in 1973. We had just come through the decade of the 60s. All of the moral values, traditions, 
and rules and laws of life that had governed Western civilization for 2,000 years had been, it seemed, suddenly jettisoned in one decade. And acting in that moral vacuum, the Supreme Court moved to provide what they felt were, was a solution to the problems created by the blatant and epidemic immorality in America. And so the sin which was engendered in the sexual revolution was to be covered up by the abortion revolution. And so it began the parade of the dead. Today, those babies would be graduating from high school, choosing colleges. But one out of every three of them is not here. If you watched a graduation ceremony this past year, you should know that every third place should have been occupied by a hood and cap and gown that was empty, for that child was not there. Not there to be valedictorian, not there to go on to be a doctor, lawyer, minister, whatever, perhaps President of the United States. 35 million Americans are missing in this bloody action that has been such a dark blotch on the escutcheon of our country. I am sure that one day people will say, how could have Americans at the end of the 20th century have been so blind, so morally obtuse? How could such moral turpitude have been allowed to continue? How? Because in large measure it has been done in darkness, in abortatoriums. But the light is beginning to shine. This has only been done because of the complicity of the media. Think about it. It is virtually impossible to get any television station in America to show a picture of an aborted child. But how many tens of thousands of victims of the Nazi Holocaust have been shown on television? How many pictures of slaves in productions like Roots have been shown on television? How many times did we see the burnt bodies of people in the Vietnam War brought right into our living room? But never a picture of an aborted child because they know that if the light were shined in that darkness, that abortion would end. Sherry Richard, who is a sonographer, who takes sonograms of uh, babies in the womb, said something, I think, very, very perceptive. She said this, if wombs had windows, abortion would end tomorrow. Think about it. If the light shined into that darkness, people would see the atrocities and they would be appalled. They would recoil in horror. And they would say, this must end. How could people allow such a thing as that to happen? But it happens in the secrecy behind the well-protected doors of abortion clinics and behind the walls of a mother's womb, unseen and unheard. The media will never let you see. There's this media blackout. Yes, Holocaust, Vietnam, slavery, but no babies that have been aborted. They reach in with forceps and rip off a leg. And then they rip off another leg. And then they rip off an arm. And the baby may still be alive. And the baby is fighting to avoid the forceps, according to sonogram. And then they rip off the other arm. And then they reach in and crush the baby's head to pull it out. Or they inject the womb with a saline solution that burns the baby alive. 
I hope that appalls you. I hope it makes you sick at your stomach. The media knows if that were shown on television, this horror would come to an end. Woe unto that nation that sheds innocent blood, the Bible says. Woe unto those people who have complicity in it. What were the Germans doing? What were you doing? Your grandchildren may ask, what were you doing during the American Holocaust? What did you do to stop it? And they will look back on these days when all of the details will be known to everybody and the mask of silence and secrecy and the darkness will have been taken away and light will have shown and they will see it in all of its ghastly horror. And they will say, how could you have lived during all of that and never lifted a hand or lifted your voice to stop it? How long, how long Will this Holocaust go on? We want to give you an opportunity to lift your voice right now on abortion, the defining issue of our time, as well as a host of other issues. Contact us right away to receive the 2020 Spiritual State of the Nation Survey. This will give you a chance to tell us what you believe are the most pressing issues that face America in 2020. You will be helping us plot our course for this crucial year, and we will make your opinion known to key lawmakers and media outlets. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339 or call toll-free 877-962-7677, or you can go online to djkm.org. And if you're able to include a generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry, we will thank you by sending you the new book, Miracles in American History, Volume 2, Amazing Faith That Shaped the Nation by our friend Susie Federer. This is the sequel to one of the most popular books we have ever offered. And this edition features all new stories of revivals, faith, and captivating courage from America's history, from the Wesley brothers to Billy Graham. Don't miss this brand new book, Miracles in American History, Volume 2, by Susie Federer. And if you're able to give a generous donation of $60 or more, we will send you Miracles Volume 2 plus the six DVD set, Fearfully and Wonderfully Made, which includes a study guide. This set features full length messages from Dr. Kennedy in which he presents a powerful apologetic defense for the sanctity of human life and shows the dangers America faces as the sanctity of human life is replaced by a false quality of life ethic. Make sure to contact us right away to raise your voice on the vital issues America faces with the 2020 Spiritual State of the Nation Survey. And if you're also able to include a generous donation, we will send you Miracles in American History, Volume 2, Amazing Faith That Shaped the Nation by Susie Federer. And as thanks for your generous donation of $60 or more, we will send you the six DVD set, Fearfully and Wonderfully Made, plus the study guide. And as you donate, you will be helping this ministry continue our work of broadcasting the gospel, producing solid biblical resources, and proclaiming truth on many of the key issues of our time issues that frankly are not being dealt with on other national television ministries. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll free 877-962-7677, or you can go online to djkm.org. My, how the years fly by. 
2020 is now upon us and it's another election year. And if you ever needed a lesson in the importance of national elections, look no further than our federal court system. Recently in California, citizen journalist David DeLayden was found liable for damages against Planned Parenthood by a federal jury and ordered to pay the nation's largest abortion provider $2 million in damages. His crime? Recording and releasing videos of Planned Parenthood representatives negotiating the illegal sale of baby body parts. This is like arresting someone who shouts stop at a fleeing criminal and fining them for violating noise ordinances. And predictably, so-called journalists in the mainstream media who claim to be defenders of the First Amendment are nowhere to be found when it comes to this egregious attack on journalism and free speech and truth. The truth is they have little interest when a cause doesn't perfectly line up with their personal left-wing politics. The former Attorney General of California, Kamala Harris, who until recently was a candidate for president, vigorously pursued DeLayden's prosecution at the behest of her funders at Planned Parenthood. And he still faces criminal charges on several points. While the Planned Parenthood ghouls who were caught on video breaking the law, you got it, go unpunished. But the good news is we are in the midst of a massive remaking of the federal judiciary. Nearly one fourth of the judges on the entire federal court of appeals in our nation have been appointed by the current president. Elections matter and the work is far from finished as this miscarriage of justice in the case of David Daleiden reminds us. But don't miss this. The treatment of David Daleiden is merely a foreshadowing of life under the village socialists who so desperately want to be your rulers. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Truths That Transform. We'll see you next time. Next week on Truths That Transform. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We've also helped seven full-time abortion doctors walk away from the industry. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.